Hi everybody, I'm here today in my garage with my 2008 Argo Avenger 700. Most of these machines are pretty similar regardless of the size. They're all uh, manufactured with the same basic running gear, chains and sprockets. Uh, I've been doing a little bit of maintenance on mine myself lately because obviously dealers are quite expensive and a lot of the repairs are pretty simple once you figure out how to do it. I've also noticed that there's very little information on YouTube regarding Argo maintenance. So I've decided to start videotaping some of the basic repairs that I do in case anybody else is interested and wants to give it a go themselves. Today I'm going to be checking my brake pads. I've been having a little issue with a right hand turn and these machines operate the same as a skid steer. So you apply brakes to one side and that causes the machine to turn. If the brakes wear then you won't have the turning ability that you should have. And I've noticed a little bit of uh, oversteer in the steering so I'm thinking the brake pads may be wore or it's possible a caliper could be stuck because if they get a little bit dirty it'll take uh, require more force in order to turn your machine. Uh, the basic tools you'll need for this today is a pair of needle nose pliers and a can of brake cleaner. That's about all you're going to need so we're going to give this a go. As you can see here this is the cockpit of the Argo. The first thing you have to do is remove your floor pan and your dash cover very simple procedure they just clip in the dash panel has I'm gonna try and uh, zoom in right here I apologize for my camera abilities right here just above the gear shifter on the right hand side there's a lock key that you have to turn it's very simple you just turn it you just turn it counterclockwise and this allows you to remove your dash panel this is this is the lock key right here very simple, very simple procedure. I'll place that to one side. And the rest of it is just a simple matter of getting your camera set up first of all. This would be a lot easier if I had a cameraman here operating for me. But as you can see, all you have to do here is put your gear shifter into neutral. That allows you to play to get your, your cockpit. Your, allows you to get your dash panel it and the floor pan you just reach up same thing the floor pan removes as easy as that so this will allow you access to your brakes this is your this is your steering system here so all that happens when you're steering an Argo is you have your chain on your right side on your right side as well as on your left side so when you apply your steering to turn this plunger here is attached to your steering wheel it applies pressure to your brake caliper right here this is your right side and this one over here which you can see better this brake caliper right here is your left side so as I said this is the plungers to turn your Argo when you apply pressure if you will turn left, it applies pressure to the pistons on your brake cylinder and the same thing in the opposite direction. So this turns, causes your caliper to apply pressure to your rotor which allows you to turn. So to remove your brake pads, it's a really simple procedure here. It's something that you can actually do in the field if you carry an extra set with you if you ever find yourself in a jam. All there is, there's two cotter pins holding in your brake caliper, your uh, brake discs. There's one right here there's one right here this is the one on the forward part of the machine and there's another one right here which I've already removed so I can show you this is your cat this is your cotter pin that holds in your brake discs same thing on this side right here there's a cotter pin here forward and there's another cotter pin right here on the rear of the caliper so all you're required to do is get a pair of needle nose pliers Squish the end of your cotter pin so that you're able to remove it. So as I said, I've removed the rear cotter pin. This is the end of the front one, which I've squeezed together. Then you have to reach in to the end of the cotter pin. I don't know if you can actually see Right, yeah, right here. I'm gonna grip those that cotter pin. 
with my pliers and push it out. The end of the cater pin is right there. There you go, you can see it in here. That's the cater pin right there. So I'm just gonna get the pliers on here. Trying to do this with one hand. There you go. Cotter pin is removed. And actually, brake disc, the brake disc has actually fell out. As you can see, I was going to show you how to move up on it, but both of the brake discs actually fell out when I pulled out those pins. They fell down through, so they're not seized. There's a slot right here. Sometimes you got to reach up underneath with your finger, push up, and you can push the brake pads up and pull them out from the top, or you can push them down from the bottom, and they will go all the way down through. One of them is actually still there. It didn't come all the way out. So, that presents a little bit of a problem. I'm gonna have to get the needle on those pliers. Get in there to get that brake disc brake pad, sorry. This is the fun part about an Argo. Is there's nothing easy to get at. I had to lay the camera down for a second there because it required two hands to actually get the brake pad. You can see I've reached my hand up underneath the caliper. And there's a slot by the rotor where you can have enough room to get your fingers. So what I've done is I've reached up, I'm pushing up on the bottom of the brake pad. That'll allow me to reach my hand in. And voila, there's the brake pad. That's the other one. Uh, I just pulled out the two brake pads. They actually look really good. There's not much thickness on these when they're new. Uh, I compared them to some new ones I had there, but there's no need to replace them. So what I'm thinking is the caliper is probably just a little bit dirty and it's not uh, coming out all the way. So this brake pad here actually is the same. You can see the pad here and the metal backing. It's the metal backing here and the front part is your surface area. You don't want to get any oil on that because that will cause your brakes to stick. So what we're going to do is lay those brake, lay those brake pads aside for the, for the time being. We're going to come down here with it with the camera there there we go so this is your rotor here there's two pistons in your caliper one on either side as you turn your machine you should be able to see the piston is working out yeah you can see the piston coming out now as I turn the machine that's the left piston. So this piston right here, try this with a screwdriver for a pointer. This piston right here is not coming out as far as this one. But you want to keep working it. Then what I'm going to do, you can see now the pistons are both out. I'm going to take some brake cleaner. I'm going to spray in on those pistons, nice and shiny and well coated. I'm going to take my pry bar, I'm going to work these pistons back in. It should move in fairly easily if you get your pry bar in the right position. There we go. My light is kind of in the way here as well. so. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to put the piston back in. So both of these pistons now are fully in. One on that side and the one on that side. They're both fully in. You can work, you can work those pistons multiple times in and out. You uh, use your handle, use your handlebars. 
use your handlebars to uh, get the piston to uh, push out. Use your pry bar to put it back in. Do that, coat it with brake fluid cleaner. That's all I use is just a standard uh, automotive brake cleaner. Works fine, doesn't damage any rubber products. Make sure you read the label. You don't want to cause any deterioration of the rubber seals in your calipers, etc. So I just did that numerous times. I worked it back and forth. The caliper seems to be free, seems to be working free there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to reinstall the old brake pads. The process is exactly the same should you choose to purchase new ones and put them in if yours are worn. So right here again, you're going to need to have your two cotter pins ready. I suggest when you're doing this, your cotter pin is opened up a little bit here where it was spread apart to keep the brake pads in place. I suggest replacing the cotter pins with new ones. It'll make this installation a lot easier because they have to be pinched all the way together or they'll be very difficult to get through the holes. Me being a sucker for punishment, I'm going to reuse them also because I don't have any at the moment. So what I'll do here is I'll just take my needle nose pliers, pinch these together as much as I can. They actually went together pretty good there so you don't have much of a space between the two ends. So what you have to do now is start with the start with the brake pad that's closest to you. You just slide the brake pad back down into the slot right right here. There's one on either side of the caliper. It's basically just on either side of the brake rotor. It's just the opposite process of how you removed them. The problem is, is you have to line up four holes. There's one on each side of the caliper and there's one on each brake disc. So trying to get these cotter pins through can be a little bit of an issue. But what I find easiest to do is drop the caliper in place. Uh, sorry, drop the brake, brake pad in place. Put your hand underneath the caliper to hold it up. Because it's quite easy actually for the brakes to reach underneath and hold up these pads. And that allows you to have a little bit of wiggle room to line up the holes. So it's just a matter then you've got to play with the brake, di brake pad until the holes line up. So I'm going to put both cotter pins in the left side, or sorry, the right side I'm working on here. I'm working on the right caliper, but I'm working on the left side of that caliper. So I'm just going to try and line up the hole here. Look down, you can see it. Got it through the caliper. Reach back up underneath again, wiggle the brake pad. And you can see here now, one brake pad is in place. You can see the cotter pin that's closest to the front of the Argo. The back one is kind of hit away behind the steering cable, but it's right, it's right here, down here. So you can see, yeah, you can't see it, it's kind of hit away there, but it's the exact same as the one that you can see there. So that's one brake pad reinstalled. So now we have to do, we have to do the same thing my trusty screwdriver pointer again right here this brake pad goes down into this slot the shadow so I'm gonna drop drop the brake pad down here on the subject yeah so right here is where it's gonna go you may get a look at this you may not I'm gonna drop that brake disc in place and what I'm gonna do with this one because it's a little harder it's a little harder to reach underneath on the inside. So I'm gonna use my needle nose pliers to grip the brake pad from the top. Put the cotter pin through the brake pad as you lower it in place. That's the tricky part to do without dropping the brake pad. So as you can see now, there you go. Both brake pads are in place. Right there, the cotter pin is through the brake pads. So now all I have to do is push that cotter pin together until it comes out. You can see the end of the cotter pin right here. So that's back in place. Do the same thing with the other one. <clears throat> now this one you can see now, you can't see it in the brake caliber, but you can see it coming through right here. So then all you have to do is take your needle nose pliers Make sure the cotter pin is all the way through 
and open up your cotter pin. That prevents the cotter pin from backing out. It doesn't take much. There's I'm just grabbing the end of the cotter pin and these cotter pins one part one end is longer than the other. It allows you to get a grip on it with your pliers. So as you can see here now, I've opened up the cotter pin. It's not pretty, but I opened up one side there pretty good on each one. So that's it. Then all you have to do before you drive is you have to pump your brakes, or your steering. I call them brakes because the brake is actually what steers the machine. By turning right and left, that'll apply pressure to your that applies pressure to your caliper and pushes the brake fluid back into it. There's also a spot in here. So this is your steering, this is your steering that attaches to your handlebars. That pushes on your uh, brake cylinder. So right here, if you can see my screwdriver, right here, these are your pistons that apply pressure into your master cylinder. Your master cylinder is right here. This is a sight glass, uh, not a sight glass, there's a drain plug there for checking your brake fluid levels. Not a bad idea, you just remove that and make sure it's level at the bottom of the hole as you would in any other uh, hydraulic braking system. It's not very easy to get at and thankfully I haven't lost any brake fluid yet so I haven't had to replace any. There you have it. Whew. As quick as that. The whole job actually only took me about 20 minutes. But again, I never had any trouble with anything with the caliper pins being seized in or anything. But that's how you would replace your brake pads. Make sure your calipers are clean, they move freely, your brake pads aren't worn. Check your brake fluid to make sure it's topped up and you should be good to go. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Uh, please subscribe to my channel, which I'm planning on starting or have just started. And there'll be more Argo tips and some outdoor tips and maybe a few hunting videos to follow. Thanks for watching.